The following is Summer 2011, Math 263, Test 3, Number 2. Uh, I think in this section here, I will do uh, Part A and Part B only. But I will see. Now, consider a solid E bounded by Z equals to dr squared, where B is a positive number, and Z equals to H, where uh, uh, H is a positive number. Now, let's think about this. Uh, the first equation, I hope you know, you can see right away that it is a paraboloid. And the second equation, it is a plane parallel to uh, xy plane. Okay, now if I try to draw it, this is what it looks like. Uh, the first one is a paraboloid. is ugly okay where the, the top here is c equals to h and the parabolic is c equals to b r squared now the thing is uh, we don't have exact number for h and b uh, they are just parameters here so uh, you see that this solid is bounded above by h and bounded below by b r squared right now, I think one of the things we are interested in uh, where uh, if you uh, project this to the ground, if you uh, project this to the ground, uh, I'm sorry, it's supposed to be here and this is supposed to be here. If I project that to the ground, what is the, uh, what is the radius of this circle here? Now we can do it by z equals to h equals to br squared, right? Uh, h over b equals to r squared so r equals to the square root of h over b okay now let's go back if i try to draw it i'm trying no promise that this would be nice That be good enough. Okay, in which the top is z equals to h, and the bottom is z equals to uh, b r square, right? Okay. Now let's see. To find the volume of E, then let let me do double integral right now to save me some time. So the volume of E equals to the volume of E equals to double integral. Uh, we have said earlier that the boundary, uh, the domain of the bottom at the bottom will be given by uh, square root of h over b as radius square of h over b. So in the integration, it will be from 0 to 2 pi and then it's 0 to square root of h over b Okay, and the height will be h minus b r squared r d r d theta. Okay, uh, then uh, because it is independent of theta, then I pull the 2 pi out, right? And then inside I have this integral from 0 to the square root of h over b. Uh, hr minus br cube dr then this will be 2 pi parentheses uh, hr squared over 2 minus br to the fourth over 4 from 0 to square root of h over b now you remember that uh, r squared is h over b r squared is h over b so 
r to the fourth will be h squared over p squared. Now if I simplify, this is what I get. h squared over 2b minus s squared over 4b. Okay? Which is, if I compute inside, uh, I will get uh, h squared over 4 b, which then becomes pi h squared over 2 b. That's the volume of that b, volume of solid E. Now, find the centroid of E. Now, when we say centroid, uh, centroid which that means the row of x, y, z is a uh, constant. Now, don't forget this one. Don't forget this one. Okay. Uh, so uh, the mass of solid E should be equals to the maybe. If if you think about that, you know, the, because it is a centroid, which means the density is uniform everywhere. Okay, so the mass will be uh, the density times the volume of E, which is k pi h squared over 2b. Okay, that's the mass of E. Now, second, uh, we want to find our x bar. But if you think about that, this, this, uh, this solid is radial. That's one. Second, the density is constant everywhere. Therefore, the x bar and the y bar should be zero. Okay, with some explanation here because E is radial, but saying that the E is radial is not enough. You need to also say and the density is constant. Okay, or you can say the density is uniform everywhere. Our issue is only about the z-bar. Now the z-bar will be, of course, a 1 over the mass of E, double integral. I think we should do triple integral. Uh, again, 0 to 2 pi, 0 to square root of h over b, and then uh, the height will be from uh, br squared to h and then uh, the density times the z times the dv which is r dz dr u theta okay this is my dv here this is my dv this is my dv here okay remember the z bar you basically insert z into the integral Okay, now because uh, the density is constant, I can pull it out. It's k over the mass will be k pi h squared over 2b, right? And because the uh, integrand and the inner integral is free from theta, I can pull the 2 pi, right? And then uh, I will integrate with respect to z. It will be integral from 0 to square root of h over b. Integral, uh, normal integral. Uh -huh. And that will be c 1 over 2 c squared with r from b r squared to h of uh, then d r. Okay, now the k will cancel. Let me bring the 2b on the top. The pi will cancel. So it will be 4b over h squared. I hope I don't make any mistake in my algebra there. Okay, oh, I forget the 1 half. Well, let me put it here. Okay, and then uh, I have integral from 0 to square root of h over b. 
okay and then r the c square will be now h square minus b square r to the fourth dr right when i replace the z no i'm not replacing the r though you know because the integral earlier with respect to z uh, this is equals to 2b over h square integral from 0 to square root of h over b and then uh, h squared r minus b squared r to the fifth dr now from here i think that's a quite standard situation this is one half h squared r squared minus one six b r to the six b squared r to the six from zero to square root of h over b okay let me plug it in first so this is one half h squared times h over b minus one six b squared times uh, r cubed over uh, b cubed is it r cubed? no, no, it's h cubed I'm sorry and this is 2b over h squared right? 1 half uh, h cubed over b minus 1 6 h cubed over b ah, you see something Simplify very nicely. Okay, outside I still have 2b over h squared. Do you notice that I can factorize my h cubed b out? h cubed over b out, and inside 1 half minus 1 6. I hope you can see that's actually 1 third. Right? Now this will then be 2 over 3 h. okay in other words in other words let me tell you quickly here so the center of mass the centroid of e is 0 0 2 over 3 h now if you think about that if you think about this notice that this solid is radial right so the center of mass z the c component of the center of mass must depend only on the height it doesn't depend on the width of this solid okay now of course we can't really tell uh, the two thirds but we kind of pretty sure it is independent of b okay because this b only tell us how wide the the parabola is supposed to spread okay now this is for summer 2011 math 263 number two part a and part b